all right, Sage Rosenfels, I want you to tell me from the other perspective. So we talked about what's next for the Vikings after signing Cousins, but is it a good idea? Cousins is your quarterback going forward. Can you win with Kirk Cousins? Should they have signed Kirk Cousins to this extension? For me, I was more of a play it a year and 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 let's play it out. And uh, you know, if the Vikings, if he has a great year and the Vikings win the Super Bowl, you know, they'll probably have to either overpay him next year or it's one of those situations where they might just have moved on and say, you know what, we I, I just don't see, as I said, I went through that list earlier of all the teams that have won Super Bowls and they were pretty much good, very, very good to great quarterbacks. And uh, they, they've got the guys that really made their teams g great and great enough to win the Super Bowl. And I haven't seen Kirk do that time and time again. They had a good season last year. They went 10-6. They, they, they had a really, really good team win uh, um, at, the, uh, at the Saints and in the playoffs. That was a bit of a surprise. But you know, they, they didn't go to the Super Bowl. They didn't, uh, you know, make it to the championship game. And so, you know, he hasn't, the team hasn't gotten better in the two years that he had been here. And so I don't see them getting better with possibly worse players as we go here, uh, you know, it, for the next couple of years after that. And I was, I think in my mind a little bit, and I, I'm ho almost hoping this team rebuild, tries to rebuild a little bit. And even, you know, maybe trade an Anthony Barr, try to get some draft picks and hit on those draft picks and start with a young quarterback in that, sort of new thing that teams do where they get, they get a young guy who's really inexpensive mm -hmm. and they can build this really good team around him and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and I was sort of more lean to that as a, you know, future for the next, you know, two, three years for this, for this football team. You know, I, I am conflicted Sage because Kirk cousins is coming off of a great year where he set his career high in passer rating and where he got them a playoff win and ranked in the top 10 by pro football focus. And usually if you have those things, you look at them and say, well, that's a quarterback that is worth investing in. We would say some of the same things about like a Dak Prescott. You would say, well, you know, he's not the best quarterback in the league and he hasn't taken his team to a Super Bowl, but you should invest because it's hard to find a quarterback that good. But uh, the uh, part of it that pulls you back the other direction is when he's been good and when he hasn't been good. And it's uh, been pretty consistent over his career that the tougher the opponent, the harder it is for him to win the game. And he was really good at the end of the game against New Orleans. And he makes a great throw to uh, Kyle Rudolph and an amazing throw to Adam Thielen. He deserves all the credit for those plays and for that playoff win because he made that happen. And that's something he hadn't done before. But when we're talking about, wow, he won one playoff game in overtime um, in five years as a starter, it's pretty hard to look at it and say that's absolutely worth being a top three highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I, and I think it's because there's nothing that he does great. Is there anything he does great? I think the one thing he does great is play action. When someone's open downfield, he's going to get him the ball. He, he, he's a, yeah, he's a very, I always say he's a very, very good. One of the best, like seven on seven quarterbacks in this league, where generally things are with rhythm, with timing. There's not an offensive line, defensive line, pass rush thing going on. There's not pressure. It's not the fourth quarter and you have to have this throw and, and you have to maybe move around a little bit. He doesn't do those things, but as far as throwing the football, he, that he is a, a really, really good, if not great thrower. But other than that, I think that's why you watch what Russell Wilson does and you watch what these guys, what Aaron Rodgers has done for a number of years. And these guys that I would consider great quarterbacks and see all the things that they do that go, wow. That is, you know, what Pat Mahomes does. That is some great football play. Does some, you know, whether it's throws or whether it's moving around or just, just various skill sets. Even Lamar Jackson, he's a great runner. He is. I mean, he is. An, I think he's a better runner than Vic in a lot of ways because he's like almost more elusive. Vic was just fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kirk doesn't really do anything great except for when everything around him is pretty much perfect. And that's that's where I, I think I struggle with the long-term investment with him. And if you've only won two games in the regular season against winning teams in two full seasons as Vikings quarterback, it does make you question, can you win four against really good teams to get to the Super Bowl or three to get to the Super Bowl, um, depending on your situation? That is really tough for me to believe. And when you come off last year where you had a great roster from top to bottom, when there's only one or two players on an entire team 
that we're talking about is struggling, like Pat Elfline and Xavier Rhodes, those are the only two guys, really, that didn't have excellent years last year. Out of the entire roster, um, Garrett Bradbury had his struggles. Of course, the offensive line wasn't perfect, but even the tackle play was decent. They have two good tight ends, two great wide receivers, and you get 10 wins, and 10 wins is nice. But if you don't have all those things go right for you, if you aren't the healthiest team in the NFL, if you don't have the ninth easiest schedule in team history, how many games will you win with Cousins as your quarterback? The answer is usually eight or nine. And so if- is this one of those things where you sort of believe that Kirk has had? And again, I, I think Kirk's a good player, you know, and uh, I don't think he's a bad player by any means, but he has had great luck in his career. Oh, yes. You know, yeah, he's had great situations. Yep. For what is now many consider the best or one of the best offensive minds in football in Kyle Shanahan. You know, Matt LaFleur is on the staff and Sean McVay is the tight ends coach. I mean, uh, and, and he played really well in that system. And then he is, you know, since then didn't do maybe as well in the John Gruden system comes here and he basically gets that system again with all those pieces around him and a lot of good things around him. You know, you know, two great wide receivers, you know, two of the better receivers, you know, in the NFL now, obviously Dalvin Cook. Uh, and, and now two quality tight ends. They had a lot of pieces around him last year, but still they only could get to to one playoff win and, and to 10 regular season games. And a lot of those wins weren't because Kirk played great. He just sort of did his job within the system, hit the guys that were open, and uh, and they won those football games. And also, again, they had a pretty good defense, as they do almost every year under Mike Zimmer. And so it, he's an interesting conversation to have, but he hasn't, and to me, always made his team much better than they actually are in the first place. And I guess I would ask, over the next three years, do you believe that you're going to have a better roster, a better situation, an easier schedule, and so forth, than you had over these last two years, where, again, he was good, and especially last season, he was very good, but... You know, he had the benefit of that October where he faced four of the worst defenses in the NFL and went absolutely crazy against them. And then you get to a playoff game where it's one of those tight games, those really tough battles where you're getting your butt kicked by the other team's defense. And a lot of times, great quarterbacks find a way. And with Patrick Mahomes, that's exactly what happened in the Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo played well. San Francisco's defense was really good. And on third and 15, the guy makes a legendary play that sets them up to go on to win the Super Bowl. And you can't compare Kirk to Mahomes, but that's kind of the point because money is part of this. If it was just, is your quarterback good at football? Well, this would be a different conversation. It's, is your quarterback worth that much money, that percentage of the cap that you have to give him? And what does he need to win? The answer is he needs a lot and he's had a lot and he still has never won. So that's where I hesitate. And I think maybe it would have been a better idea to let him play it out and then see what happens. Because you look at right now, the situation in the NFL, there's all sorts of quarterbacks that are available and are out there. Is that never going to happen again? I don't know. I feel like it probably will. Do you, is this a is this a question of maybe the Vikings sort of like not knowing what their stripes are? You know, if they're like, you know what I mean? Like, what, who are they? Like, they're supposed to be, at least it seems like the, in theory, the plan is um, really good defense and, and a running game and grind out wins and uh, not high flying, you know, uh, passing attacks. Well, they were 20. So here's what I like. They were 24th in the league in passing yards last year. But they're paying top five or or top six, uh, mm-hmm. you know, salary. Like that doesn't make any sense. You're getting less less bang for your buck, right? Right. If we can be 24th in the league in passing, you know, maybe we could have the 15th best or, or 18th or 20th best quarterback and still get that number. Uh, and a lot, by the way, in a great screen team last year. Let's add that to sort yes. of the conversation yes. of one of the best. In the you, you know what your job is as a quarterback in in, in uh, on screens. If he's open, throw it to him. If he's not, throw it in the dirt. Don't take a sack. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it on screens. Your job isn't to like read all this and do all that and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, those are parts of the offense that make can make the quarterback better than, than who it is. And, and said they had all these things around them. They're paying a high price dollar uh, for the 24th best passing, you know, uh, team in the league. Right. And so when you go back just a couple of years to 2017, so we talked about how good the numbers were for Kirk Cousins this last year. But if you go back to 2017 and you look how Case Keenum, who is a pretty inferior talent to Cousins with a similar system that Pat Shermer was running, a lot of play action, running the ball, 
Case Keenum ends up being ranked the ninth best quarterback in the NFL by pro football focus and grading in the, the eighth in quarterback rating. So and would you say that 2017 and the 2019 offenses, though different coordinators had a similar flavor? Very to them, much. Yes. Very much. Very right? much. A lot and of the, the same things. Sort of played, maybe played better than who they actually are, I, I guess, is over there. Both, you know, probably similar length careers, right? They probably came out around the same year. By the way, Case Keenum looks like possibly with uh, Kevin Stefanski in Cleveland as a backup quarterback. I like that move because, you know, Case is one of those guys that you know, doesn't care who, and he knows Baker is a starter, but he'll push him every single day. And, and if he gets a chance to get in there, they'll try to show him up. So I, I like uh, that, that move by Kevin Stefanski. Oh, I do too. And if he, you know that if Baker gets hurt, um, Keenum can go in. 